Hello and welcome. While the year 2020 has taught us many things about the state of our planet and the need to be more mindful how we're treating our environment. Now let's think about it for a moment. We've had fires, drought, floods, and depending what theory you believe about the origins and the reason for COVID-19, we're still living through a pandemic. So this year really is teaching us, the human race, some serious lessons. And one would hope that we would start to be more mindful about the state that we're leaving our planet for our children and their children's children when we're gone. And um, you may have heard of the word sustainability before. Well, today we're going to chat a little bit about it and how we can do our bit to help our environment and lead by example to teach our kids the simple foundations that can be easily integrated into our daily lives. You know, and in the words of the late and great Whitney Houston, I believe our children are the future. (laughs) Teach them well and let them lead the way. So (laughs) how can we start to teach? our kids about sustainability well food is a great place to start and our special guest Rachel Favilla is here to talk to us about it today and also about the art of minimizing food wastage now a little bit of introduction about our guest Um, Rach is a comedic nutritionist and yoga teacher who provides evidence-based information about how to stay well and calm in the most thigh-slapping hilarious way possible and she's also the author of the book periods, poo, and glorious you. Thanks for joining us, Rach. How are you doing? Oh, my pleasure, Rach. Thank you. And thanks for throwing the Whitney Houston line in there. You know, I love, love me some Whitney. That's why why I put it in there, my friend. That's, I know you you love your songs and you love to sing. So yes. (laughs) Now, before we sort of get into the nitty gritty, I just wanted to address that um, there's a lot that encompasses uh, sustainability. It's a really big piece to talk about, and that's not what we're going to talk about today, but I just wanted to define a little bit of it. So people don't think that we're just we're just sort of speaking about sustainability being one thing. There's a lot that encompasses what it is. And there are three main pillars of sustainability, economy, society, and environment. And these principles are um, also informally used as profit, people, and planet. So it's not the big picture that we're talking about today. We're only really talking about and addressing the pillar of planet and in particular um, food with regards to how we can actually teach our kids about sustainability through that. Um, So, you know, um, and we hear a lot about corporate organizations speaking about their pledge to sustainability. And of course um, we're the opposite end of that spectrum too. We're not talking about the big stuff. This is small stuff for kids. So in your view, Rach, why do you think that food is a great place to start with teaching kids about sustainability? I think because it's just so tangible, like it's right there in front of them and there's a few different avenues you can do- go down. Yeah. Um, so you can talk about food wastage, you can talk about composting, you can grow food. Uh, so I guess it's just, I mean, and they eat probably at least three times a day. So there's always just something little you could, a little seed, pardon the pun, that you could plant um, in there. And I think even with us adults, like food is such a great metaphor a lot of the time for like, bigger issues. We can, I think, always find a food metaphor to be a meta- to teach us something bigger. And yeah, I think just with kids, they're, su- they're such sponges. So just using every little opportunity you can to like make it fun, make it playful, get them involved. And I feel like food is just one of the things with everything. It just brings us together, doesn't it? So I guess why not with this topic as well? I really do think it is a great place to start with teaching kids about this stuff. But as you said, it is something that that we do um, and kids eat constantly throughout the day. Um, So yes, great idea and great place to start. Um, Now talking on a, a larger scale about adults, of course, you know, people's lifestyle is their own choice and however people choose to live their own lives is 100% their own decision and rightly so. Um, But in that regard, um, we've seen some changes to our lives of late um, that people haven't had much of a choice about and um, starting with, you know, talking about food and of course the supermarkets, starting with the fact that we've had to start adapting to, um, you know, the the plastic bag um, scenario and not using um, sort of, you know, um, well, well, it's it's the reusable plastic bags, isn't it? Um, Um, So from that perspective, there's so much that incorporates sustainability. So we have to make it age appropriate for kids. So in your view, where do parents start with having age appropriate conversation with kids? And where where, where do they start? 
Um, I think a great way to start with kids, and it's I actually um, last year worked on a STEM project at a primary school with some teachers. They were doing a so STEM, science, technology, engineering, maths. They had to all make healthy lunch boxes, but they all had to use it. All had to, was all about sustainability and minimizing plastic and you know using the whole food. And they would they tied it in with nutrition. And so kids like. I think for starters, give them more credit. I think sometimes we try and dumb things down too much. These kids understood not majorly complex things, but they were, they were really switched on and they just wanted to learn more and they picked it up really quickly. So I think a really great way, I mean, they're learning this at school once I think pretty sure once they go to kindy or at least reception, they're starting to the um, sustainability language is starting to filter down into the curriculum. So they're kind of exposed to it at school. A lot of um, classrooms have compost bins and all of those sorts of things. So I think it is just simple about teaching them that they can put their, I mean, well, they could eat their apple core, but if they don't want to eat their apple core, it can go in the green bin. It doesn't have to go in the trash can. Um, that, you know, oh, how we could plant some herbs in the garden or, you know, just those sorts of things that like you can do it straight away. Um, with them and just teaching them, you know, to eat, what can we, more produce, less packets, like a banana doesn't need a extra, it doesn't need to go get wrapped because it already comes with its wrapping or, you know, we can just put some, um, we could make, make something homemade as a treat to take to school. We could just put it in a little container rather than um, something that comes like pre-packaged, you know, with a whole lot of other packages in a big package, you know, those sorts yes. of um, wrap things. So, yeah. yeah, so if we break it down, looking at food as the starting point, um, as you mentioned before, we can plant a garden, of course, with kids, and they do do that in a lot of um, kindergartens and preschools, um, minimising food wastage, which we're going to speak about more in a moment, um, which is a bigger part of the conversation, um, of course, and, um, you know, making compost for, for, for kitchen waste as well. Have you, have you done much of that sort of stuff before? Me, yeah, personally. kitchen. I've no. never, I know, I've never actually sort of made kitchen compost before, but you know that that is something that, of course, that we can sort of do quite easily, yeah. which is good. And for it the is, it's, well. it's totally easy. It's as simple as getting just a little countertop bin. Yep. Um, so like, it could be a mini trash can from one of the cheap shops. Some councils actually offer them to people, and you just line it with a biodegradable plastic bag if you want to keep it tidy, or you can just chuck it straight in. And all your food scraps and things, if you buy when you make muffins or do baking, if you do the biodegradable um paper then you can put that in there as well um like even when you get takeaway in like a cardboard box with that it's got like a bit of you know dressing or pizza stuff stuck to it that can go in there as well and then when that's full you just take it out and put it in your green bin um so it's really easy it's it's actually i the the compost is actually closer in my kitchen than the actual bin so it's actually easier to do that yeah um yeah, so, yeah, and then so, 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 so we've got the plant here. in the garden, and then we've got making the compost. So the compost can actually go into the garden, and that's that's a win-win. Um, and one thing you speak about in your article, which we're going to speak about more in a moment, but which is something which is really quite helpful, is questioning whether we're actually going to use all of the things that we're buying. Like really spending the time of going through our pantry and going through the fridge, seeing what we actually have before we sort of make that big long food shopping list and going actually and buying more which a lot of the time and there's nothing more frustrating let's face it than actually sort of throwing food out and then having to put it in the bin and it's gone so when we're looking at sustainability really taking the time to be mindful of what food we already have at home and I think you you do articulate that really well in the article now away for, away from food um, there's lots of other bits and pieces that we can actually teach kids and lead by example um, you know of course taking the time to recycle our rubbish into the right bin which is a really good thing stuff you spoke about just before about making homemade items instead of buying new ones um there's nothing better than actually you know making a homemade card as opposed to having to go out and buy a new one and the new ones of course come in plastic and all of that stuff so really being thoughtful of going what do we have in the house that we can use um now this is another big one fixing items instead of going out and buying a new one now um i'm not sure about you if you've ever been to a communist country before, but I've actually witnessed firsthand in some um, in Cuba as an example where they don't necessarily import the amount that we that we would here in Australia uh, or other sort of countries from China where they they literally have to either fix or recreate for something they already have um, at their disposal. So you know, fixing items instead of going out and buying new ones, we don't necessarily always have to have new shiny things, um, and that's a really 
really big life lesson um, I learnt anyway personally um, from being in, in that country and, and seeing the way that they live and just thinking, well, you know what, the old watch just worked just as good as a new one once it was fixed so we can fix things so you know there's other things that we can do around the house of course with electricity ensuring that you know we don't need all the um lights in the house to be on only in the rooms that we're in lots of different things we can i guess um lead by example so it's just a, a um a point of view of actually being mindful about and being committed to to actually to sustain to sustainability if i can get my words out absolutely and i think making it a habit i think once things yeah. become a habit it's not an effort anymore you know like oh i have to do this it's like oh yeah you just you find yourself just going oh the light doesn't need to be on um and i think it's kids love that sort of thing like make it a game for them to be like how much can you save me on this on this month's power bill you know you see a light on you have permission to turn it off you can turn things off in the wall if love you that. like it <laughs> just those things. kids love playing cop you know, and then like, <clears throat> I'm going to arrest you. You've been using too much power. Like, you know, so make it fun for them. And then they feel important. Like they've got a job and, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So, yeah. So there's definitely lots of things around the house that we can actually do, but getting back to food, we published your article titled um, sustainability dining from A to Z part one. So for someone who hasn't read the article yet, can you give us a little bit of an overview of what it's about and just tell us what inspired you to write it? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I wrote it. Now, keeping in mind, I wrote this months ago when, before there was COVID, before there was uh, all, all the other um, stuff that's come to light. Sorry, not stuff. Uh, uh, causes that have come to light um, in the recent weeks as well. Obviously, they've been brewing for centuries, but they've really exploded in the last few months. So I wasn't trying to take away from that um but i wrote the article about um ways that you can just really simply teach kids about sustainability starting at the dinner table or in the kitchen and i've written it in um it's well this is part one so it's it's a to z but this is part one so it's a to g and each letter we're talking about like a is for b is for and you get a little tip about something you can do and your kids can do your whole family can do cool. to the kitchen for sustainability so it's like create c is for creativity and it's like oh i know the recipe says this but do you know what's similar you know say the recipe says broccoli but we've got cauliflower to use up and they're kind of similar so why don't we just put cauliflower in instead of going out and buying broccoli just because the recipe said so and like having a bit more autonomy um and those sorts of things e is for electricity you know do we need to cook or could we like do a serving suggestion can we just do a little bit of a you know tapas sort of platter for dinner um, or could we bulk cook so if the oven's on for like one batch of muffins could we put in a few trays of roast veggies and then we can have them for like salads or lunches or and just yeah. again get into the habit of going oh how can i be more resourceful and you you mentioned also um, with quite a few of the the food items on that list as well really that there's a lot of um I guess, talking about broccoli as an example, um, instead of just, you know, uh, using just the floret part at the, the top, you know, realistically, you can use the whole broccoli. I, I think that's not, that's, that's normal because I use like the, the, the stalk part, but you know, you were mentioning offline before that maybe not everybody actually uses the whole part. So realistically thinking, well, a lot of the time we can use a lot um, of, of the food items that we, they're actually buying like tail to tail like the whole lot as opposed to just throwing part of it out and going well you know I, i'm not going to use that part of the the animal or that part of the the the, um, the vegetable maybe yeah and a really cool resource that you might want just popped into my head now um it's a uh, simplicious by sarah wilson it was a zero waste cookbook so over like hundreds of recipes in it not one scrap of food got wasted the entire time there's even a and it's a little bit out there she even made a banana cake using the banana peel now i haven't made it don't can't vouch for it but apparently the taste tester said it was almost as good as regular banana <laughs> cake <laughs> almost as good <laughs> almost what? but there was no waste so it you know it gets brownie points there <laughs> what, what was so that cookbook again rage what was that called simplicious simplicious okay and what's the author's name that's sarah wilson sarah wilson cool that sounds pretty yeah. good. So in your opinion though, um, why is it so important that we simplify nourishment then? This is like my favorite thing to talk about. Um, I think because as a society, I and mean, I don't think it, we haven't meant to, but we've really complicated things that we've created a lot of rules and we think there's lots of shoulds and shouldn'ts and goods and bads and can and can'ts. And it really, I just say, come back to real food, what you enjoy, what's available in quantities you enjoy it. And so that can mean you don't, you know, 
if it gets to dinner time and you just can't be bothered cooking, you can have a smoothie and then like some banana and peanut butter. And that like for one night, that's not going to kill you. It's not, might, might not be a traditional dinner food, but you know, if you've got bananas that need using and daggy greens that could just get blended up, why not? Like who's going to mind doing something like that? Or just, um, yeah, I think guests thinking, do I need, okay, yes, I've got this recipe and okay, I don't have these few ingredients, but I've got some similar things. Could I just make it without some of the ingredients or just let's do some substitutions? Like it's not, a, you know, a recipe is a guide. It's not a rule. Um, and I feel like some of the rules we've entrapped ourselves in make us waste more, not make us, but encourage us to waste more food because it's not, yeah, we go, oh, I couldn't do that because it's dinner. So it has to be this. Or, yeah. You know, I've been yeah, there with that it's... recipe and just going, okay, the recipe says I, I need this ingredient. So I need to go in my car to go and buy this ingredient, which I'm probably only going to use once and then I'm going to throw it out. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. And just, I think it's fun to get comfortable with, making those substitutions because at first it's just out of convenience, but then that's how you start to learn to come up with your own recipes. You get a good idea of the base, but then it's second nature. Like now for me, I just like it gets to Friday and shopping day Saturday. So I'm like, right, what's for dinner tonight? Well, whatever we haven't used from the week and we just, you know, cook it all up or yeah. If yeah. Got, if I I've get you. Big, yeah. If I've done what are some of your favorite food creations then you've come up with using leftovers then? Yeah. So like even last week or the week before I had um, like some leftover chickpeas just in a container. Like I'd use some to make some um, raw cookie dough. Um, like, cause I love doing that. You can actually use chickpeas to make like an edible cookie dough, just PS. Um, but I was like, Oh, like what am I going to do with the rest of them? And I ended up blending them with, I also had leftover pumpkin that needed using. So I blended that up and add just with some, added some flour and bicarb soda and did like half savory muffins. And then I added some stevia vanilla chocolate chip to the other half. And I had half sweet, half savory muffins made from pumpkin and chickpeas and a few other things that I there already had on hand. And they were like the best chocolate chip muffins of my life. They were great. I actually made more just before I got on the call. Um, so yeah, just uh, things like that. Um, gosh, well, I, mean, I think, just I think it's about being committed to actually to, to sustainability instead of thinking, well, like you said, instead of throwing that food out and then realizing I needed something sweet, maybe, or well, I wanted something sweet a day or two later, you have actually compiled everything that you had and created something with it's a little bit of effort and a little bit of thought, really. That's all it is, isn't it? Yeah. And just going, why not? Maybe that could work. Like I've had some flops, but for the most part, most things have been <laughs> edible. Um, and, you know, just even really simple things like daggy veggies can be dressed up with a really simple dressing made from, you know, olive oil, some sort of vinegar and all your favorite herbs and spices. And then yep. you just serve that with some rice or pasta and dinner's done and it's not a recipe. It's just and a serving it, And it really can be a fun activity, I guess, with kids too, is actually finding ways to be able to use what you've got and come up with something creative and, and delicious and healthy yeah. too, which is all good stuff. But, you know, I guess food wastage may seem like a little bit of a trivial issue with everything that's been going on uh, around the globe of late as well. Um, just, you know, purely what are your thoughts on this? You know, I mean, people are probably thinking we've got bigger fish to fry at the moment um, with what's going on with the pandemic and we've had all this stuff happen in America. So, you know, yeah. what are your thoughts on this? Um, I think I need to tread gently with what I say. Um, I think it's that, I guess, what I've been learning a lot this year, especially in the last few weeks, I've been doing a lot of reading and trying to educate myself more on all of the issues that have been brought to light. And I think it's that one, sustainability is always going to matter. Food wastage is always going to be something that we have power over just by simply using what we have and being mindful of that. And I guess, you know, the more we do that, it does, it leads to saving money. It leads to usually keeping us healthier. It's always going to be good for the planet because I guess at the end of the day, Everything that has been brought to light matters so much. And I really want to emphasize that, but nothing matters if we don't have a place to live, I suppose, at the end of the day. So, yeah. and it is our fuel. so as we um, educate ourselves on, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement and all the other things that are uh, around in the media at the moment, and we'll con things will continue to come up. We need fuel to fuel our brains so that we can understand and the energy to do what we need to do to support and, you know, be united and without, I suppose, our health 
we're not going to have the energy to put towards those really important efforts. Um, yeah. So I suppose trivial, but it's not really, it's, it's part of it. It's, it's the foundation that then leads us to do bigger and better things. Yeah, I th- as you said, it is the foundation. And with everything that's happened, you know, looking at, um, first of all, um, okay, well, the fires and everything else, you know, as you said, we need somewhere oh. to live. And, you know, with global, with climate change and global warming as well, um, with, um, with COVID-19, we've had to naturally learn to be more sustainable with our food because we didn't, we went through that phase with stockpiling and and going to the supermarket and there wasn't stuff on the shelves where it was readily available. Um, So the world is changing around us. Um, So we need to be able to find more ways of of looking after the planet to make sure that, as you said, we've got a place to live. And this is something that there, there probably isn't any other more important time, I guess, in our generation than right now to be teaching these things. So I, I, I agree. I do think it is something that we need to be having these conversations and just being mindful in a, on a day-to-day basis, just what can we do to start? And of course, leading by example so the kids actually see it. But the other thing is also too, and, and also financially everyone's going through, not everyone, but a lot of people are going through some form of a, a um, you know, what we are in a recession, financial struggle at the moment too, sustainability and eating sustainably can actually, as you mentioned, help us save money as well. So lots of different reasons for us to be considering this this sort of stuff. And at least if this conversation just prompts a thought in someone, a viewer or someone listening or watching and it starts them to doing something different, hopefully um, we can start a wave um, of, of good stuff happening out there. But as yeah. much as this is about physically living in a more sustainable way, it's also, I think, about shifting our mindset and views on sustainability. Um, and I think if you care about something enough, you're going to stay committed to the cause. This, this, this shouldn't be something that we're just going to do for five minutes because there's all of this stuff happening at the start of the year. Um, so I wanted to ask, in your opinion, how can we become more committed to, to becoming sustainable, su- sustainable in yeah. for the long term really do you mean in just in general yeah i mean how, how and why can do you think we should really help or what's going to help a, a viewer or a listener sort of stay committed to their cause of, I, of, of living their life more sustainable i can't say the word sustainability <laughs> <laughs> yeah um well what i i can i guess i can only speak for myself but what i do and it's been a learning curve as it is for everyone um But I guess I think first just acknowledging that whatever you're currently doing, it's a result of the way you've been raised, the environment you've been living in. So up until this point, you've been doing the best you can. Um, So I think forgiveness and acceptance is a good way to start, not acting out of guilt. And I think just going, what's something little I can do? None of us are going to get it right every day. I still have a car. I'm not ashamed of that. Sometimes I need to drive at places. But could I walk? Oh, actually, I could walk to that thing. I could take my bike to that thing. You know, it's not like I always, you know, use up everything in my pantry and kitchen before I go to the shops. But even if it's just like I'm out the door, actually, no, I probably don't need to go out the door and get something new. I could just use this. It's, I think, just about almost making it a game. Like how little impact can I have today? And, you know, not then if you find yourself falling back into an old habit going, oh, that's right. And just trying again. And it doesn't have to be everything all at once. So we've talked about a lot in this um, one episode, or episode, little talk, whatever we call this, um, with video. Um, but you could just choose one thing. And then once you've mastered that and it becomes a habit, because that's the thing, change takes time. But once you've mastered one thing and it's a habit, it doesn't feel like an effort anymore. It's just what you do. So it's like pick one thing at a time. And once you're doing that and it's thoughtless, mindless, then you can start something else. And then I, I said this on another interview that I did recently. I said, you know, it might seem trivial to just do one thing, but if you start today in 365 days time, this time next year, you could be doing a whole lot more that today would have felt like an effort, but by a year's time, it'll It'll be nothing. It's like, I suppose, going back to kids. I, I was having this conversation with a friend the other day and I was like, I remember, you know, in primary school, I'd go, like I'd be in year one and I'd go, oh, what if I can't do year two? What if it's just too hard? What if I can't handle the work? But by the time I was in year two, I knew enough from year one to carry into year two. And then same, I would have had the same freak out. What if I can't do year three? But by the time I was, and I think it's the same thing. Um, We've all got to start somewhere, we don't we? You know, as adults, we leave the classroom, but we don't leave the learning. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it, well put, okay. Rach. 
Thank so, you. so this article is part one. I'm looking forward to chatting you next time about part two. Um, we'll have a link through to the article, which is um, the A to G um, of the alphabet as to what we can be doing to bit by bit um, living a more sustainable um, life. Um, so hold tight and uh, looking forward to speaking with you um, <laughs> about the next, the, the next list. In the meantime, if parents have got any questions for you, whereabouts can they find you? Oh, probably at the moment, my favourite place to hang out is Instagram. So I'm just um, Rachel Favilla. So the little at sign, Rachel Favilla, R-A-C-H-E-L Favilla. So F for Freddie, A-V for Vixen, I double L A. I'm also on Facebook um, at Real Soup for the Real Soul. Um, or there's my website, all the W's dot Real Soup for the Real Soul dot com. All oh, the and I got W's. TikTok. I got TikTok in isolation. So if you're on TikTok, find me. I'm also <laughs> at Rachel Favilla. Awesome, Rach. Well, thanks for the chat and look forward to the next one. Take care till then. See ya. Bye.